evening uh, to the meeting of Corporate Scrutiny Committee. Um, uh, this evening, there are no planned fire drills during the meeting. If you hear the fire alarm sound, please treat it as a real emergency and evacuate the building via the nearest safe escape route. The nearest escape route is via the stairs to your left as you leave the council chamber or public gallery. Exit via the door at the back of the building and walk across the inner car park to the evacuation point, which is the pavement opposite the police station. The lifts can't be used in the event of an emergency. Please do not re-enter the building until your advice is safe to do so by a member of staff. Uh, you probably have noticed that I'm chairing the meeting again this evening in the absence of uh, Councillor Steve Hastings. Uh, Councillor Hastings is still uh, indisposed with his uh, uh, ill health uh, and uh, is slightly improved, but far from better, I'm afraid. Uh, I think we all wish him uh, a speedy recovery. <laughs> I will pass that on for more members and the cabinet. Um, if we move on to the... Uh, best. Oh, uh, in the absence of uh, uh, Councillor Steve Hastings, Michael Besson is substituting and has been formally uh, identified as a substitute for this meeting. Uh, if we move on to the agenda, uh, can we confirm the minutes as a true record of the meeting held on the 12th of October 2021? Anyone wants to raise any corrections? Will someone move acceptance of the minutes? Karen, Stephanie, uh, Joe, yeah. thank you very much. Are those in favour, please raise your right hand. That's a great chairman. You know, I think. Thank you very much. Uh, declarations of interest. Uh, any members wish to make any declarations of interest uh, further than those that are made uh, on their uh, declarations as a councillor? No, thank you. Uh, public question time. Uh, we actually do have a public question. It's unusual at this committee, but... Uh, 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 so, yes, you, uh, please, uh, if you go to the microphone in front of you, uh, there's a button on the right-hand side that you press, and it should light up. Uh, and if you give us your name, uh, and, uh, and then ask your question. Uh, are you pressing the right hand button at the front of the... It's just gone red now. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sue Izzard. I'm an officer of the Shanklin Hotel and Accommodation Association, known as SHAH. Um, and I would like to address the meeting with a couple of points and questions after reading an article in the County Press dated the 5th of November. And uh, my questions relate to the Cabinet paper uh, that's being considered tonight on the future of Culver Parade. In 2018, there was a full consultation process and a clear mandate for the regeneration of the Bay Area. Officers of, from Shah attended the consultation meetings and were really encouraged that plans for the Bay Area would attract visitors from all over the UK and beyond, encouraging even more investment to the area. Our understanding of the proposed investor in the dinosaur theme park would be responsible also for the upgrade of the Dinerland building and the museum. This investor has a similar park in Portugal, which contributes over 60 million euro to the local economy. And a fraction of that income would be very welcome to the economy of the Bay Area, as we really don't think Brown's pitch and putt business has the same pulling power. My questions are, with reference to the petition mentioned in the press release, uh, was there full explanation to the signees of the alternative development on offer that would bring so much benefit to the Bay Area? The Cabinet Member for Regeneration and Business Development has been quoted in the press release saying that the new administration wanted to secure alternative investment that complemented the environment and heritage. 
Yavaland yields so many fossil finds, and with regular field trips from academics and fossil hunters, um, where else should the home of the Fossil Museum be sited? Surely it is the heritage of the bay. If this council has reconsidered... Sorry, another question. That's the two questions. Third question is, if this council has reconsidered the proposed development and investment that was already on the table, please, can you tell us what alternative development and investments are now available? As Sandown and the Bay cannot afford to wait any longer, we need regeneration and not more degeneration. So please can the committee provide us with some answers? Uh, the, commis the committee will be uh, considering the, the papers to cabinet later on in this meeting. Uh, I'm sure that we'll cover the topics that you uh, raise when we get to that, that item on the agenda. Um, you're welcome to stay for that. If you don't wish to stay, uh, we can get you a, a written response to your question uh, subsequent to the meeting. Yes, please. That would be good. Thank um, you. Do you need any inf more information? Uh, you know where to. to, uh, to... I, I, I don't think we we do. I think it's going to be. This is a, really a question for corporate scrutiny, but we will be questioning corporate scrutiny in this meeting about the, that that. Uh, that paper, so there's an opportunity to raise it here, and if you're not satisfied, then an opportunity to raise it at uh, at the uh, cabinet meeting on Thursday. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, John, do you want to add anything? Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. I, I think just to confirm, it is a question more for the cabinet member than the scrutiny committee. Um, we'll take a note of the question, and I'm sure the cabinet member will want to address that when the cabinet considers the issue on Thursday evening. Um, I'll pop upstairs now and see the question and get her details. Uh, I, I suspect there may be some questions this evening from the members of this committee as well. Uh, if you move on. Uh, if, you, if you move on to the uh, progress update. Uh, you've got the progress update sheets in front of you. Um, that chairman, normally just for noting, unless members have got any particular comments. Uh, unless anyone has any, everything seems to be correct in the paper that you've got in front of you. Uh, if you're, but there is the one change is that uh, a delay in the presentation of the report from the um, um, committee looking at uh, task and finish group looking at uh, the housing. The island plan. It's the island plan. Too. Island plan. Yeah. Everything else is sort of, uh, I think, um, we're happy there. Can we just note that? <coughs> Everyone happy to note that? Yeah, noted. Uh, okay, if we move on. Um, Isle of Wight uh, Community Safety Partnership Annual Report uh, 2021, 20, pages 15 to 82. Uh, would anyone like to, do you want to present sure. it? Yes, can you hear me? Hello, uh, good evening, councillors. Um, my name is Amanda Gregory, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I am Strategic Manager for Regulatory and Community Safety Services for the Isle of Wight Council, but I'm here tonight in front of you um, with a different hat on, which is Chair of the Community Safety Partnership. Um, some of you um, will, will know that this partnership is required of the local authority and a number of statutory partners on the island to come up, uh, to, to meet together and to come up with joint strategies um, to reduce crime and disorder on the Isle of Wight. Um, as part of that, the uh, Community Safety Partnership does an annual strategic assessment each year. Um, every three years we do a full assessment and uh, the yearly ones and this year particularly is just concentrating on our priorities. From that strategic assessment, we come up with a partnership plan. 
Um, that isn't to duplicate anything that any of the statutory partners are doing or duplicate their duties um, with specific things, but it is to work as a partnership to fill in the gaps and try and um, deliver um, on, on things together. And, and obviously, um, partnerships can achieve great things. Um, with regard to the partners involved, um, the Isle of Wight Council um, are required to be at the partnership, along with the police, um, the Isle of Wight Fire and Rescue Service, sorry, the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Fire and Rescue Service, um, the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Probation Service, um, and the Community Rehabilitation Company. Um, we're also required to have the clinical commissioning group. Um, tonight, I do have some of the partners available. Um, Andrew Wheeler, who is my community safety manager, he's involved in that partnership. And uh, Chief Inspector Steve Swift is here on behalf of Hampshire Constabulary tonight. We may get some other partners who are dialing in who can't make it in person, um, but those uh, partners are here to also answer any questions. Um, why are we bringing this to scrutiny? We are required um, under the legislation to have our, our partnership plan and the assessment scrutinised at least once a year. Um, and that is the purpose of tonight, to bring you the strategic assessment, a copy of the partnership plan, and uh, for the committee to consider those reports and confirm that you are satisfied that the partnership is fulfilling its statutory duty. Um, obviously, you have the reports and you have both of those strategic and partnership plans. Um, happy to take any questions. I think one of the, the key things I just want to, to indicate, obviously, COVID has had um, an effect on the crime rates, um, and that is nationally, that's not just on the Isle of Wight. So we have had some impacts and reductions, quite significant reductions in crime, particularly in areas such as burglary or, or um, shoplifting. Um, obviously, that might be just a blip because of COVID, so we might see in future years that that will change. Um, but in general, the overview, uh, sorry, the overview of crime is that our crime rate on the Isle of Wight has reduced even further. Um, we are now 64.5 um, recorded incidents per 100,000, um, which is lower than the England and Wales um, average rate. Welcome to ask any questions. Thank you. Uh, would any members of the committee like to ask questions? Uh, Councillor Edlund, John. Oh. Hello, Amanda. It's just a bit technical, so it might be a bit difficult to answer. I just wanted to point it out, though, because I've, I've noticed that we don't have comparative statistics anymore with the with the mainland for killed and seriously injured on the roads. That's it, it, it's explained here that it's. Um, we don't have a statistical analysis because people are changing their methodology. It's just that the last time that I heard about these figures in a road, what was it the Road Safety Committee? Um, there was a major discrepancy between the Isle of Wight and the national average. We have a quite high le level of KSIs on the island. And I'm just wondering, when are we going to get back to a situation where we can analyse this in relation to the rest of the country? Sorry, it's a different question. No, 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 it's quite my fault. Oh, there we go. I'd obviously done it wrong. Sorry. Um, yes, a really good point. And I think one of the things is we do try to compare our data across the board with other comparators. So there is a, a list of nearest um, comparators to us from a community safety perspective. And you'll find that in various um, services across the council, that there will be different local authorities as seen in that comparator group. Um, Things do change in the way things are reported. Absolutely, that's a really good point to make. And sometimes that does make it difficult for our analysts to try and draw figures from it. Specifically with the, the partnership in terms of road safety, that is a priority area on the partnership. Um, just to give a little bit of background, we have a, a road safety forum, which used to sit as a subgroup of the partnership. Obviously, there have been some changes that was led by the Isle of Wight, Hampshire and Isle of Wight Fire and Rescue Service. That shift is now coming um, to the local authority to lead that group. So um, we haven't got our representative from Highways here tonight but they have recruited a post to lead on that, which will also report back into the partnership. Now, with that new post being um, put back in place, there, there will be a refresh of that road safety forum. Um, and I know our strategic leads for highways is very, very keen to look at those figures 
and start to put in a, a plan to make a difference to them. Um, but that is in a series at the moment. It's just being put back in place um, to deliver. Does that sort of answer the question? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I have Cameron and Cameron. Uh, come on. Uh, thank you. Obviously, you said some crimes such as burglaries have gone down, but have we seen others um, increase, such as domestic violence? And what you know, comparatives there can we see? While some may have gone down, other ones could have gone up. Obviously, throughout the lockdown period, what you know, data do we have on that? Yes, you're quite right. One of the ones where we have seen an increase in in, in um, uh, numbers is, is domestic violence. Um, and, and that, again, has been something which we've seen nationally. Um, what we do have on the island is a domestic abuse forum, um, which, again, is a, a fully integrated partnership group, um, which is currently a, a subgroup of the, um, the Community Safety Partnership. Um, there's a substantial work going on with re regard to domestic violence to, to tackle um, the incidents, assist the victims, and also um, look at the perpetrators as well. And that is linked with our serious sexual offences group as well to, to join all of that together. Um, there have been significant work around um, uh, media uh, and domestic violence this year, which hopefully you will have, will have seen. Um, and, and hopefully that will start to make a difference in our figures. Uh, Councillor Luciani, Karen. Um, I wanted to talk about reoffending. Um, what are we not doing so well? How are we letting people down? Maybe that that don't want to reoffend again. Are we are we missing some tricks? Right. I'm probably not necessarily going to be able to answer that one tonight, and I'm not entirely sure we've got um, our partner on the line who actually does um, lead on that. We have a reducing reoffending subgroup. Um, which is looking at a strategy and refreshing the strategy that we've got. Um, that is primarily read by um, probation and the community re rehabilitation company. But what I can do is um, get some more detail for you on that and get back to you on that, no problem. I'll just ask my colleague, Andrew, uh, if off the top of your head you've got any further detail yeah, on that. I mean, uh, without digging down in, into the detail, we do see the improving trend in, in certain areas, which can be contributed to, to a number of different factors, because it's not necessarily the, um, the offending itself, it, the, the issue, it could be wider factors that lead to that. Um, so those wider partners work with you know, the, the probation service, uh, what was community rehabilitation company and things like that. You know, I know you know, improvements in how all those sorts of things um, have, have a positive impact. Um, but yeah, we can certainly get a bit more information if you want. There's quite a bit of detail in the assessment. Uh, do you have a chew over it, Cameron? And if you, you know, email me at this. Uh, I have Councillor Lilly, Councillor Downer, and Councillor Spink. Uh, Councillor Lilly, Michael. Thank you. Um, to, just to um, first, I just wanted to declare that I'm a trustee of the Isle of Wight Youth Trust because it is actually mentioned in the report. So just wanted to put that on record. Uh, within that, I just noticed it, Councillor, quickly. Uh, the particular, I wanted to follow up. Um, Cameron already asked the question I was going to ask about um, uh, domestic violence and domestic abuse. I particularly wanted to come in on your answer about um, perpetrator programs. These have been very successful in parts of the country, and they've actually, in places like West Midlands, have reduced domestic reviews considerably. But these programs are not, uh, they're actually on the mainland. Is there actual programs that are actually carried out on the island? And, and, and if, if not, why not? Mm. Thank you, uh, Councillor Lilly. Good, good question. We do have a perpetrator programme on the island, mm. delivered here on, on the island um, by the Hampton Trust. It's part of our um, contract uh, for our uh, commission service around uh, domestic violence and abuse. Um, so they do deliver on the island. And we've seen a uh, improving trend in um, referrals to that service and an uptake of that service um, as well from, from perpetrators. 
Um, and only just this week, I was reading some some case studies of individuals who've been involved in that that program um, as well, which was um, really positive. Um, so yeah, it's something we are really pushing um, with our, a lot of our campaign work, um, and you'll see uh, a national change. Uh, you know, in the in the focus um, um, uh, sort of national media focus around. Uh, focusing on perpetrators, which really is the problem, uh, rather than victims, because because that's what we need to to try and solve. So yeah, certainly something we're focusing on and, and seeing some good work there. Is, sorry, supplementary question: Is that is that going to be expanded? Because I know that there is further funding from the government putting into those programs. You know, will will some of that come to the Isle of Wight? And do we have some data coming out of those programs that are actually showing? That they they're getting results, i.e., reduced in the West Midlands. It's on like reduced by about fifty percent or something. It's quite significant in the actual behaviour. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, difficult for me to comment on the direct outcome from uh, the perpetrator programme into the the data uh, to do a comparator. But obviously, for those individuals involved in the programme, um, we we the the commission service would do. Uh, an evaluation on the effectiveness of, of, of an individual involved in the programme. Um, and the, sorry, your, your earlier question about the funding, um, I can certainly find that out because there's lots of uh, different funding streams of that out at the minute. Um, but I can find that out from uh, for Hampton Trust is, uh, if that's something they've accessed recently um, and been successful with. Yeah, I just, just wanted to make a particular comment. Um, at present, often that is linked to a contact centre, um, and obviously the, there is a contact centre on on the island. It's now a thing called Tidal Support Contact Centre, but I mean that contact centre isn't funded in any way. Whereas in, in other parts of the country, uh, normally the contact centre is actually funded alongside programmes like the perpetrator programmes, because obviously part of the issue is about contact. Yeah. Yes, sure. I just want to, to come in, um, Councillor Lilly. Really good questions. Um, because we're here talking about the partnership tonight, the partnership doesn't contract the service. The partnership has a subgroup which brings partners together. So if it's very specific questions about the service, we'll need to go back to um, the commissioner, which at the moment is, is sat with adult social care. So we would have to ask about any further funding. What I can say is... Um, obviously with my other hat on in the local authority um the domestic abuse act came in this year and there are further duties on the isle of Wight council to deliver certain things um so that service and the recommissioning of it will be looked at as part of that process uh laura i think you want to make a comment yes Thank you very much for that. Um, maybe the two of you can pick that up outside of the meeting. Uh, I have Councillor Downer, Rodney. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd just like to um, go to uh, page oh, glasses, 25, and it's on about drug offences on there. And it seems to me that the, well, it looks like the, from 2020 up to now, it's risen. Um, is that an impact of the uh, lockdown? And also, are substance abuses included in that? Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I'm happy to, to to start, and Steve might want to comment as well. So the um, the 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 drug offences. Um, I think that we've seen a national trend, and I think some of that is attributed to the situation that COVID has presented itself with in certain parts of the area. And again, national media has covered um, some of that as well. Um, 
Steve, do you want to you maybe tap to oh, Okay. <laughs> Is it, is it working? Yeah. So just to pick up on um, Andrew's point, um, we, we, we're not unique on the island in, in that rise. It's, it has been seen nationally. Um, and, and a big part of that is is the changing dynamic in in the way crime was being reported during the, the, the sort of the period that this assessment refers to um, and the way in which we were able to police certain activities that were occurring um, in the community uh, as a result of the sort of change in dynamics um, that COVID brought with it. Um, the lockdowns, for example, changed the way you know people's behaviours. Some people were were less able to be outside, so it just changed the way we approach certain aspects of our policing operation, um, and that will play a part in that. So, uh, yeah, just picking up on that point. Thank you. Was that answer your? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, Councillor Spink, please. Sir. Um, I just wanted to ask please a question following up actually from uh, Councillor Downer, which <clears throat> is to do with uh, drug offences. Um, and given that that is one of the areas that is increasing on the island uh, and has been increasing according to the report for a number of years, I wondered why it isn't one of the priorities that are um, priority offences that are being looked into. So over the next two years at page 73, the priority offences are violent crime, reduction of reoffending, antisocial behaviour, domestic violence and abuse, serious sexual offences, um, prevent and road safety. I think it's also to note that that came out as uh, the number two item in terms of what the public were concerned about. It did, about. So, yes. Uh, and I was a little surprised that maybe there wasn't any mention of yes. it. Um, page 75. Tell us something like that. Page 75, respondents felt that um, drug and alcohol related crime was one of the uh, priorities. Thank you for that. It's certainly something we can take down, take back to the partnership to consider um, whether that needs to be a priority. Obviously, when we are looking at drug um, and alcohol related offences, there is a crossover with um, substance misuse, um, which is another group which is led by public health on the island. Again, another partnership group. It, it's a uh, it isn't under the Community Safety Partnership, but it is something that we have representatives <coughs> on that board. So it looks at, um, obviously, the, the incidents around that substance misuse, which then the crime may come out of. That partnership um, has just been reinvigorated. There's been another meeting, um, which has just been in the last month. Um, it's been sort of dormant for the last year or so. So um, hopefully that's something that we can look, up in look at in terms of... Um, those who are facing those problems with drug and alcohol but certainly we can take it back to the partnership to have a look at the links to crime and whether that should be um, a priority i don't know whether you want to yeah, yeah of course um yeah just to pick up on the on the point around um the, the sort of drug use and drug offending so there's a couple of points i think are really worth noting here um the first one is um a lot of drug offences come down to proactive um, police uh, activity and as a result of, of COVID and some of the lockdowns, we were able to really focus on, on certain information that we were receiving. Um, so part of the increase is actually as, as is a, could be seen as a positive in, in as much as there is the right targeted activity from a policing perspective um, and actually um, I chair a, a drugs partnership meeting that Andrew attends. I also um, hold an internal drugs um, regularly, sort of on a monthly basis. We hold an internal, um, uh, we call it Oblast, but uh, an internal uh, drug related harm meeting. Um, and locally, for me, from the policing perspective, it is one of my priorities. Uh, and is something that I give an awful lot of uh, attention to. Um, and some of the increases that you'll see will be as a, a direct consequence of the actions that we task through those meetings and through those forums. And Andrew will have seen some of the activity, that, you know, I, I share regularly with our partners around what we're up to and what we've been doing. Um, and, and actually some of that will be seen as a, a positive from my perspective because we're out there targeting the right individuals. And as a result of that, we are seeing some of those um, increasing in offences because we're detecting it, we're identifying it. So actually from a community perspective some of it could be seen as a reassuring factor that we are out there um, disrupting this criminality i hope that sort of gives a bit of assurance there 
Yeah, I think there's possibly a slight mismatch between what the aims are and what's the reality on on the street. So it's very encouraging to hear that. Um, Chairman, did that? Uh, Councillor Love wanted to come in on that. Oh, Councillor Love. Councillor Love. Thank you, Chair, for allowing me to speak. Obviously, um, um, uh, I, uh, it's part of my portfolio is uh, drug and alcohol and part of the public health profile, um, an area which I know particularly well, having worked in drugs and alcohol as a school's drugs education advisor for alcohol, drugs, tobacco over many years. Um, and certainly, um, it's, it certainly is one of our priorities in terms of looking at uh, the causes and uh, treatment and support of people. Um, and um, whereas I haven't actually been to the meeting that, that you've just referenced, um, I'd certainly like to come along to that and listen a bit more to the debates about that, please, um, because that's really quite, quite a significant uh, area that we do need to address very proactively on the island. And this administration will, I'm fairly sure, take a positive stance towards that. So, just just, I think we're hearing the right sort of responses, but it's not quite there in the paperwork. Uh, sorry, just to pick up on that. Um, Inspector Smith. I'd have to really look at whether the, the terms of reference of the meeting as to whether it's appropriate for you to attend it because we discuss some issues that are confidential, but I'm certainly happy to sit down and, and look at how we can inform you in a, in a better way than currently we are. Uh, so if you can pick that one up outside of the meeting. Uh, Councillor Quigley, Richard. Uh, thank you for the report, first of all. I've realised how onerous is providing 80-odd uh, pages of <laughs> detail for us. Um, back to the drugs thing, I'm afraid. Uh, drugs crime is 5% of total crime, which, which sounds great. Um, but when you look at the figures, the death from drug misuse is double the national average, and admissions for episodes of alcohol-specific conditions is nearly three times the national average. Is there some resources we aren't getting on the island, or is there something we're missing? Because that seems quite a difference, you know, 10 or 12 percent here and there, but that, that's, you know, significant. Happy to come in here. I think it's um, something that I'm happy to pick up outside the meeting because um, there's certainly some information from public health, which um, would hopefully assure some of your questions. Um, not appropriate for me to relay at the minute because off the top of my head I won't get the specifics right but um, certainly yeah yeah could I ask that you relay that information to the chair of scrutiny as well thank you uh councillor really Michael just wanted to refer to uh, page 75 where you've actually got 1.2 community perceptions and particularly the point about antisocial behavior and I think it's important um, to put it into context that if we are, for instance, particularly in relation to regeneration of our towns like Ryde, Newport, East Cowles, etc., if you have um, antisocial behaviour in those, those communities, and I particularly speak from experience in Ryde, right, whilst you're actually um, developing the area, um, recently, there was a big meeting of people uh, in the Has area in Rise, which inclu included a, a lot of, you know, um, national people to look at the issue. And the whole visit was disrupted by uh, a number of individuals who clearly um, uh, were very offensive and, and needed support. And I think one of the comments that came back from that visit was you got to tackle your antisocial behaviour issue as well as actually getting inv investment in the town. So I, I just wanted my question was how is community safety working with the regeneration team and the parish and town councils in actually tackling issues which actually affect how those areas grow and our economy grow? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor. We we have, um, uh, as part of the Community Safety Partnership, a, a subgroup called the Joint Action Group, which looks at antisocial behaviour related cases uh, from a partnership perspective, um, because it impacts, as you mentioned, a wide range of, of partners. Um, so 
uh, one one thought is we could bring uh, colleagues from regeneration if it was appropriate um, into that arrangement um, as something to to look at there. Uh, but if there are any concerns specifically around antisocial behaviour um, from colleagues, they can raise that through that uh, that method uh, for it to be to be looked at. If there's any um, specific trends or locations of of concern, um, as well as obviously you know always advocating people uh, report ASB through. Uh, uh, 101, uh, 909, etc. I think it's actually, and uh, Mr. Wheeler, been actually raised on many occasions. Um, and I know that, you know, we do need to tackle it. If we want to get people back into our town centres and actually shopping them and prosper to them, we need to tackle the social issues which actually um, prevent them, you know. If you're doing, you're going into a town and then you're getting sworn at and insulted and threatened, which happens quite regularly, um, you're not ne never going to go to that area. If you're a tourist, you're not necessarily going to visit that area again. So we do need to really work on getting those if we want to get our economy back in and into our town centres. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stevens, Ian. Thank you. Um, I think I'll introduce myself as the uh, portfolio holder for uh, Community Safety Partnership. Um, I've sat here and I've listened and I've learned a few things. But the thing is about the supposed political side with a small P is exactly what Councillor Lilly said. And the only way that we will tackle antisocial behaviour on this island effectively is not just hold it within these four walls, but get out there, go and see the uh, town and parish councils, talk to the people at the grassroots level, get an understanding. Now, you will see in the court, in our corporate objectives, etc., that I've put in endeavour to introduce or reintroduce CCTV. The word endeavour is in there because there is a lot of work to be done prior to actually saying, yes, we're going to get, if you'll excuse my expression, bums on seats for CCTV. We have got to look at the statistics with our, with our partners and with the Community Safety Partnership to make sure that we spend council taxpayers' money and grant funding, and, and I know that Amanda and Steve and Andrew will come on to this in a moment, I sincerely hope they do, about the grant funding that they've achieved and the objectives of that. Because we're hearing um, drug-related drug offences going up. We're, we're hearing uh, domestic abuse going up. We haven't touched on the, the scammers going up. Lots of bits and pieces around here. It's not a rosy pic picture, but there, and there's a lot of work to be done. And it's not just going to be me doing it, it's going to be us doing it across this chamber and outside, working with our stakeholders, working with those that, that want to come forward and make those high streets and make those streets where people live safe. And that's where we need to be. It's, it's, I don't want this to be a, a talking shop. I certainly don't. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to be representing uh, the community safety partnership, I don't want to. I don't want a load of waffle. We need some action. We need to make sure that the next time we meet, we have some action points in in place. We need to make sure that we're we're achieving so that we can report back to you and report back to you not just oh statistics of things going up, but what are we doing about it. What have we done about it? Now, that's the element that is missing from this so far this evening. And as I said, here I am, shoot me down, nail me to the wall. It's not going to be the, the, for the first time, I can assure you of that. But I'll tell you what, if there is going to be some action, and there's got to be action, then it's going to come through us. And it's not, it's not one side of the, of the council chamber. It's all sides of the council chamber, and it's all officers. And I think that Andrew, Andrew mentioned it just now. It's talking with other people and making sure that we engage 
with other departments, other departments that probably haven't been touched before. We mentioned regeneration. Of course, we've got to talk to regeneration, but by the same token, we've got to talk to, to um, some of the elderly, elderly ladies in our own districts to find out why they why why they feel um, concerns and why and where they're going. I'm going I'm going to stop now, but. Um, you're looking, at, you're looking at the uh, cabinet member for Community Safety Partnership and whatever else goes on, come and talk to me about it. Come and talk to me and we'll take things forward. Thank you. Uh, I have Councillor Love on this item and then Councillor Beston and then a couple of questions for myself and then we'll try and tie this one up. Thank you very much for allowing me to come back in. I tried to not say too much because I'm not actually on, on the committee. I do feel as though I've had my, my wings clipped slightly. You know, I'm responsible for public health. Public health is responsible to me and, and I want to know what's going on in my teams and um, for me to hear a comment which basically says that that uh, this is a committee that discusses confidential things. Well, they answer to me, to public health, and they answer to this administration. And so I am entitled to attend these meetings, if I so wish, as the member responsible. And I shall be attending, especially now that I've been told that perhaps I shouldn't be. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Beston. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, item uh, number 14 on the paper, um, Amanda, uh, it relates to the strategic assessment back in 1920. And I do appreciate probably a bit too early, but uh, I should imagine come January we'll be discussing this again. Um, so again, it's probably directed at Andrew. Can you give me an update or can you give the committee an update of um, the work that the partnership has done to engage in town and parish council so far? And that kind of links in what Ian was saying and what Mike was saying. Thank you. I mean, we can probably do a, a bit of a, a, a joint um, response to that. So there were there were two recommendations um, from last year. So um, the first one was about the reoffending data um, to return that to the committee, and that was um, submitted after that committee meeting. And the next one was around engaging with town and parish councils. So we do um, engage with the town and parish councils when we are operating as a prevent board. We have an IWALK representative on there. Now, I know not all town and parish councils are members of IWALK, but we do engage um, there. Um, we also um, have a number of subgroups Andrew's already mentioned the joint action group um, and through that and other activities that we've got we may engage with individual parish councils if something is to do with their area um, or we might ask for a representative to come along to that we had after last year's meeting said that we would go along to an IWAP meeting um, because of COVID and I know people don't like the excuse of COVID but certainly with my council service hat on um, regulatory services have been dealing with a, an awful lot of the regulation around COVID. So some of that work was put aside. So although Andrew and I were intending to go to an IWALT meeting, that hasn't taken place yet, but we can certainly reschedule that in um, for the future to engage with what the strategic partnership is around. It is that very strategic level, looking at the main emphasis from that, rather than perhaps some of the more operational things, which individual um, partners may be doing, either the police or our community safety officers as well. Um, Andrew, if there's anything else you want to add? No, that, that sums it up nicely, Amanda, thank you. Uh, one thing you might encourage is that uh, a lot of the population of I the island is covered by councils that aren't members of IWALK and maybe are just circulating to all of the town clerks, uh, sort of a, the, your briefing documents that you're going to present when you present it to IWALK so that all town and parish councils actually know what's going on. Um, I've got just a couple of questions. Um, and road safety, um, we've got a higher level than the a lot higher than the national average. Uh, we have more deaths than you would expect. And you might easily sort of think uh, this is because we've got this great influx of extra people coming in and clogging up our roads. Uh, but the data here says that the accidents are in the winter when they're not here. Uh, so that excess is due to something else. Um, and has there been any investigation as to uh, what are the 
uh, the causes of that. Is it speed? I mean, previously, previous administration looked at uh, movable speed cameras that you, just to try and address that speeding issue. A lot of the incidents are single cars accidents. Certainly, some of the fatalities are single car accidents. Uh, so, is it speeding? Is it drugs and drink? Is it uh, the state of our roads? You know, what What are the, the factors? So someone must be looking at this. And if they're not, maybe they should be. I, I think I, I did mention earlier on in the meeting um, about the the road safety forum, which had previously been led by the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Fire Service, um, has now been transferred responsibility back over to the local authority um, under our strategic lead of highways. So um, she has recruited a post to look at road safety and will be reinvigorating what was the road safety forum to really look at this, because this is one area which does need some more work on. Uh, Mr. Metcalf, John. John, if I might add to that, I think um, for those who regularly re re review our quarterly performance reports uh, with a lot of interest, this is something that we've tracked and reported on for probably the last five years. And I think what we've seen is a fairly flat number, a high number relative to other areas, but it's been fairly flat and it hasn't increased or decreased over that period of time. There have been a number of uh, studies that have been undertaken into the causes and there hasn't been found one particular reason that sits behind that particular number. So I think there is more work to do on it and I think uh, we need to carry on looking at it and carry on monitoring it. But to, to answer your question specifically, there hasn't been one one particular cause identified for why that number remains uh, stubbornly high, but as I say, fairly flat. I didn't think there'd be one cause, but uh, so on page ten of the report. Um, uh, it says uh, uh, the data also identifies children aged 13 to 17 years with any abuse on index identified as a, a factor is at 30.35 per thousand compared to 14.3 nationally. That seems a very high figure. Um, are there any explanations for that? Are there any strategies to try and address that? Chairman, I'd refer you to my previous answer, actually. I think, again, that's something that we've tracked through the quarterly performance report for quite some time. I think what we ha have tended to find, and um, certainly we can confirm this after the meeting, is that we are very uh, fastidious in terms of how we record uh, any child that uh, arrives at the hospital. So we've not found anything that has been out of the ordinary in terms of that particular figure or any range of factors that we would need to do something to address. But it is something that we constantly look at, and as I say, refer to our quality performance reports as we go through the year. Uh, maybe this is something that uh, at some stage we could take to the Policy and Scrutiny Committee for Children's and uh, and sort of investigate, you know, try and drill down into sort of the background to, to this. But everyone happy with that? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we need to approve the uh, that we're satisfied that the partnership is fulfilling its statutory duty. Uh, I think it's quite clear that they are. If uh, other members are, will support that, uh, will someone move that we uh, um, accept their report and uh, confirm that they are fulfilling their statutory duty? Uh, uh, Councillor Robertson and Councillor Paley. Uh, everyone in favour, please raise your right hand. That's a great chairman. Uh, right, if we move on to the agenda. The agenda. Um, corporate plan, pages 83 to 84. Consider the proposed delivery of the elements within the corporate plan, 2021 20, to 25. Um, someone wish to present anything Councilor, on this? Councillor Stevens is already Councillor Stevens, here, yeah, are you? <laughs> Hello. I didn't. I didn't hear what what 
what uh, what you wanted me to do. But I'll, I'll, the extract from the uh, corporate plan is there. Um, as I referred to in the previous paper, reference the CCTV, ongoing business to the council, um, etc. Um, if you want to deal with that, I'm quite happy to also deal with the other elements, which is digital transformation, um, housing provision and housing need. Um, and I'm just open, open to uh, open to questions, really. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to dwell too much on it. You already are aware across the chamber. I've had um, very good, positive uh, uh, contributions from uh, all sides of the chamber. And um, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Ward and indeed Councillor Paul Breeding for some of their contributions from uh, one area. And also, um, uh, Councillor Richard Quigley as well from another side of the uh, area with regard to um, our housing um, uh, strategy and moving forward and trying to pull things together. So I think we're, we're all on the same wavelength. We've all recognised that on the Isle of Wight we've got... Uh, uh, our challenges and uh, to every challenge there's an opportunity there's an opportunity for innovation there's an opportunity um, to make things better for a lot of people let's hope a lot of people let's I, I really want to to push this forward I know that um, uh, our leader councillor PC Wilcox is very much on, on board with this and we're working through a, a strategy at the moment, but I can assure you that everything, everything that's been put forward from uh, all sides of the chamber is being dealt with in a positive manner. So we're taking bits and pieces from any suggestions, because to be quite, to be quite honest, um, we've got some good thinking people who are prepared to collaborate and take things forward. And I think that's what, that's what we need. Because, as I said, it is challenging. We know damn well that uh, a lot of our um, uh, properties for rent are going now for Airbnb, and uh, so we're losing, we're losing the breadth of uh, housing and uh, the units that we uh, used to have. But um, we've got a positive approach, and to be quite candid, um, we're, we're looking at taking things forward. I'm not going to dwell too much on the on the strategy because that's coming forward, I believe, in, in December. And in, uh, Cabinet, please come along, ask your questions and uh, evaluate what we're doing and add value to it. That's, uh, so that, that's what I'm saying about that. Digital transformation continues at pace. Um, the website, after a sticky um, start when we came into office, uh, we're... We're working with that. We're taking we're taking things forward in a positive manner. We're, we will be reviewing. Um, well, okay, we'll be re reviewing the situation. Um, but we're looking we're looking at things to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Um, corporate IT was granted some funding um, prior to prior to the new administration coming in. Um, we're not going to whip that away from them. We're going to actually see what we're going to do with it and see how we're going to um, progress with a new, a new telephony, et cetera, which might be based on Teams, which has been very effective across the, uh, uh, the period of the pandemic, et cetera. So we're looking at that. Um, other bits and pieces, uh, as I say, housing provision. We are looking to actually... Uh, Join in with um, being a housing provider. Now, if we can, if we can do that and do that successfully, and to be quite candid, I want every councillor in this chamber to be on board with it. It's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to take a a, a lot of input from from a lot of people. I, you know, we're not. We've come in as the administration. We come in with the administration being open and transparent, prepared to work with everyone, prepared to work not only in this council chamber, but out on the streets of the Isle of Wight to make sure that we hear from the people, we hear from the local uh, town and parish councils and indeed stakeholders and voluntary sector, what the concerns are. Have you got, have you got an idea of how we, can, how we can fix it? And as I said, I've already had uh, three or four different, um, different uh, contributions and uh, they're serving their purpose. And actually, where do we pick 
pick up on one thing and take it forward or whether it gives us an opportunity to look around what, what's been suggested to find something else. I can assure you that we will never leave a stone unturned whilst I'm cabinet member for housing. It's imperative that we get this island back to building houses for rent. And I'm not talking for profit. I'm not talking huge estates. I'm talking about housing for rent for our people that are homeless, people that are in a bad way at this moment in time. We've got to give them the hope and, uh, if you like, the hope and the pathway forward. I'm going to leave it at that, but as I say, um, fire your questions at me, and um, I'll do my best to answer uh, in the truthful and transparent way, as always. Thank you. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, there will be quite a lot of cross-chamber support for the, the concept. Uh, the previous administration set up the housing company to do exactly what you're saying, and uh, the the only issue is it's not just the people who are homeless. There's actually a tier of people above that who are in very poor accommodation that we need to actually be started to address, not just the homeless need, but the housing need that goes through those on the island. Chair, I'd like to come back and, and say, yes, we're looking across the piece. We understand that it's not just the homeless, it's not just the rough sleepers, but it's people that really are out there working, uh, working, uh, you know, uh, 40 hours plus a week and still cannot afford the rents that are coming forward at this present time. So we've got a task, we've got a task at hand and we've got to look at, we've got to look at that housing company that's set up and we've got to look to make sure it's the correct vehicle to actually take us forward. So whilst it's there, let's, let's, let's review the situation once again take it forward, but let's make sure that it's appropriate to all elements of housing that we're, that we're going to actually uh, um, need to once again satisfy the, uh, the requirements of our islanders. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lilly, Michael. Well, firstly, I'm glad Councillor Stevens is quoting from Oliver Twist's musical <laughs> about reviewing the situation. Uh, I think that the particular thing in relation to the pre community safety, um, Maslow's hierarchy of need, and as, as the Isle of Wight champion for mental health, that's actually I'm on a listening tour with Health Watch at the moment. A key, a key message is: unless you've got a safe roof over your head, you are not going to get into any form of recovery or rebuilding your life, and particularly linked to. Um, you know, the reported uh, increase in, in domestic violence and relationship breakdown, that's when actually people are going to have to rebuild their lives and actually need uh, homes. We have various emergency accommodation for, for people, but because the rented market has gone down, uh, private rented by nearly 80%, right, you've got a serious uh, situation that many families in a real difficult that perhaps for safety reasons need to separate. Uh, there isn't necessarily the housing for them to go to. So we do, I totally support where you're coming from. Uh, and it directly links to figure, you know, the things like uh, the, uh, the social problems which community safety identifies. Uh, with it within that, and I would say that is in crisis. crisis. I personally spoke to a a woman who said I I need to leave my partner and actually rebuild my life, but there is no there is no rented accommodation out for the need to do that. So we still have to live in that dangerous situation. Uh, within that, and that is the reality that's actually facing many on the island. So I really welcome what you're actually um, doing and, and support that in any way. Thank you. Uh, did you want to come back? <laughs> Leader says no. <laughs> but um, I always obey the leader. 
you're quite right. You're quite right to point out the um, the damage that it causes to our society when there is uh, uh, people in bed and breakfast, people uh, in temporary accommodation, um, not knowing when they are to be moved on. Um, the pressures on uh, a couple, you know, and 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 the children they're in going going to school, etc. The pressures are insurmountable. The pressures are um, unbearable, and they can split families and uh, family units apart. Um, and to be quite candid, it's then that uh, uh, colleagues such as uh, Councillor Andre and uh, Councillor Love pick up the tab because we've got uh, adult social care situations. We've got situations with our with our young, and really. Every child deserves a safe and stable environment to live in and be educated in and have the happy times as well as the times when they've got to strive to to get the best for their education and attainment. I'll leave it at that, but you're quite right, uh, Councillor Lilly. We need to make sure that there's a lot of collateral damage that comes along if we don't get it right. Thank you. Very well said. Uh, Councillor Quigley. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's good to hear. Every time I've spoken to somebody about housing, Peter's doing a lot of work on housing. I know everybody, all four corners, I'm going to bang this point at every scrutiny committee meeting and every count, full council meeting, and I promise, I promise I won't let you down and I will bore you to death with it, is everyone agrees that everyone deserves to live in a safe, comfortable home. If I was to divide this room in two now and say everybody that agrees that everybody deserves a decent home and those that don't, this side would be empty because I don't believe anyone in this chamber is that bad. However, the problem's going to come is when you, who, who's then going to put their hand up and say, please build them in my ward? That's where the difficulty is going to arise because we've got, too, we've got too much of not here. And this is going to be the problem. The exceptional circumstances that, that's being pursued as well at the minute isn't going to cut it either because at that rate, 80% of all development is going to have to be for rental and, and affordable rental. And by affordable, it has to be based on average incomes, not average prices. So that's not going to work because no one's going to put up with that. So we've got a real problem coming. So when Councillor Stevens says it's going to be hard work, it's going to be really hard work because I, 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 I would be prepared to lose my seat next time around to say they need to build in cows. I don't care because I've got a home and other people deserve one. So we're going to need to all stand back that side of the room. And this is where I am going to push everyone because when we start getting back into the nimbyism then everything that's talked about in this chamber and when I bring it up next time and the time and time again it is entirely pointless and we need to start now and we need to commit and we need to have those battles with our communities because it's just not going to we're just not going to get there that's not so much of a question more of a statement and i will keep repeating it i do apologize chair thank you very much so, so some of these actually oh. Uh, I better respond Councilor very quickly. To, could I respond very quickly to Councillor Quigley's statement, if that, if I may? Just want to point out we've had we've been very successful at regeneration in, in uh, securing several hundred thousand pounds to make ready um, three groundfield sites for housing, which uh, which that's that's the thing is it's making these sites far, we're cleaning them up. So we've been very successful in getting just under a million pounds for to to create housing on these sites, and that will be um, three sites across the island. But but they're not. There's no guarantee they're going to be affordable renters. There. And well done, Julia. That's fantastic. But who's going to develop them? Ian's point is the council needs to. We need we, to be. They are. It is affordable. That's part of the criteria. That's why we got the money. Great. That's absolutely great. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we seem we seem to be moving into a housing discussion rather than a. Yes. Okay. But can I just come back and uh, you know. The very points that you, you've uh, brought forward, uh, Councillor Quigley, have already been discussed by the leader and myself, and we're, and we're looking forward to take, take things uh, in the appropriate manner. But once again, once again, this is about discussion and taking things forward appropriately. This is about us all working together. We take on board what, to, what you say. As much as we do uh, uh, Councillor Quirk and Councillor Ward, etc., we take, we take everything on board. And we try to come up with something that we can move forward on in a positive way and make sure we know that we know that builders go or developers go for margins and, and, and bits and pieces like that. And we understand the blocks. So by understanding the blocks, whilst we not whilst we may not be able to remove them, 
we may be able able to find another way around and find and find a way of a, a trade off or something like that. So there's all is not lost. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Uh, just a, yes. thank you, Chair. Just just to uh, <laughs> just so that we 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 have been in discussions. So just for information, we have been in discussions with Vectors Housing. They are planning to bring about 400 homes in the next two to three years. Very very strident approach uh, across the island. About 20 sites. I can't remember them. About 20 uh, small builds on each site. Uh, I. Won't say 100% affordable, but nearly all of them are affordable. That's fact is housing delivering, and we're trying to enable those developments to come forward. Thank you, Chair. Chair, thank you, thank you for you know crave your indulgence because you know we are running a lot along a little bit. Very self same thing that we hear. Okay, we might get 400 400 houses or or units in in the space of a few years. Everyone's going to run to the hills. What we need is to actually say that we're we're dealing with things in the appropriate manner, at a pace, obviously, but making sure that we don't cause people to panic. But we would prefer people to uh, have that reassurance, you know. And that, and that and there's a difference there that what we don't want to do. And I've tried to I've tried to I've tried to do this along with the leader, and you know we. We spent many an hour discussing things and and researching things and talking things through, um, just so that we don't panic. I mean, and you hear the you hear the NIMBY uh, tag. Forget that. We're talking about islanders trying to keep the island as an island. We're trying to make sure that um, housing is housing is for those that need it who. I've got island connections, and the, the leader prior, the leader prior to her um, appointment as leader, going back a few years when she was with me, and I was the, the leader at the time, um, took on housing then, and she got the island connections pushed through, and quite rightly so. And we're going to continue on that. We're going to we're we're going to be um, responsible. But I want I want each, each each of us to be responsible and take it forward and and. Let's not let's not blast it out that okay we're gonna we're gonna solve this problem just like that. No, it's gonna be hard and we're gonna take it step by step. Um, and I think that that's the way that we can take it forward, not panic the Isle of Wight to say, look out, we're gonna here come here come the, the, the bulldozers and cement mixers. Here no, here comes the opportunity to assist those that need um, assistance. In the appropriate manner and the island way, born and bred islander. I am going to say that, aren't I? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we uh, note this report? Is everyone happy to note the report? Yeah. And yeah. Thank you very much. I send you for consideration at uh, Cabinet. Uh, if we start with the quarterly performance monitor report. <coughs> right. Uh, any any questions, comments? Um, so I was getting some clarification on page 76. Obviously, it's got the uh, title uh, Cows Ferry, the £5,453,940. Uh, what does that uh, budget forecast there actually include? Obviously, it says includes previous and future years. Um, what are we talking about within that funding there, within that uh, budget?
is in, in, in the capital program. Is that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, the question was, could we confirm what the five million four hundred fifty three thousand nine hundred and forty pound actually included? Obviously, it says for previous and future years. What does that amount actually include? Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Metcalf, John. Um, thank you, Chairman. I'm sorry. Wouldn't may wish to answer. Thank you. So that is the uh, total planned expenditure uh, on the uh, Flotion Bridge since acquisition um, in 2016, 17. 17. So that will be the total planned spend to date or estimated today. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, any other? Can I get a follow up on that? Sorry. sorry. Oh. Um, does that exclude the just over three million pounds the LEP um, paid towards this? Hello, John. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Normally, our convention would be to, that would be our gross expenditure. So that wouldn't include any income that was offset against that. Thank you. Is, is that, that your questions, Cameron? Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Councillor Lily, Michael. I was looking at the um, the regeneration and business development and tourism on page 57. Um, and then I looked at page 76 and it does mention Nicholson Road to development. And it there's obviously been or this year um, considerable expenditure that but it's not actually mentioned in the in the sort of performance measures and surveys. Could we could I have an update on on what has been spent and what is our outcome from that expenditure? Thank you. I think, uh, yeah, Count, the Councillor Lilly, thank you. Um, I will refer to um, our Director of Regen, but I think if you recall the previous administration, the last budget uh, put on hold uh, Nicholson Road as such. Um, so obviously that's a major, major project that the, this administration will be looking at. And it's, you see it's in, named in, in the forward plan. But if I defer to our, our, um, our Director, he'll better give you some more, more detail on that. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Any other questions? I've got a, a couple. Um, the um, The first one relates to the uh, capital budget for the housing, and there's quite a saving in, in that uh, for the disabled facilities projected for for the 21-22 uh, year. Um, why? <laughs> Just no demand? Sorry, uh, the on the uh, capital budget and uh, uh, the housing uh, planned housing renewal, uh, there's a substantial saving shown in the um, disabled facilities grants. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so. What we always know on the disabled facilities grants is that particular budget is always over committed um, because we have a very many applications for that particular grant but what you've seen there is a, a spend profile which is has been um, affected if you like by 
COVID, which means, which means over the past year, it's been quite hard to get builders to go in and do works to people's properties because it is works to adapt uh, people's properties to make them easy to live in. So we've had, whilst the budget is committed, we've had a slowdown in the works that have gone out. So we won't have spent it all, but we'll slip it forward into the following year and make sure that all of that money is spent on the adaptations that people need to stay living at home because that's a central part of our adult social care strategy to help people to live at home for longer. Uh, if this has been delayed because of COVID, does that mean that there's going to be a sort of pent up demand that we need to allow for for next year? Well, I think, Chairman, uh, as I said, it's not the works are delayed, but the commitment's not necessarily delayed. So I don't think there's a pent up demand. I think the works and the cash has been allocated. It's just that the works have not yet been completed. And what, what we've always found that has been a bit of a problem as we've gone through the year as well, that we've had a, quite a, a large number of applications for that particular form of funding. Uh, okay, thank you. And uh, I understand that there's a uh, some of the capital programmes in terms of uh, IT have been uh, delayed, deferred. Is that correct? Chairman, uh, you'd have to spot, point me to the specific programme that you think has been deferred. Um, I think you're referring to the website, which was. Uh, there were, if, you, if we look back at if we look back at the internal audit uh, uh, paper, uh, paper that we picked up as an, uh, as the new administration, um, due to COVID, uh, staff were taken uh, away from the uh, website uh, project and uh, assisted in uh, supporting our island residents and uh, island services. So that was. That had a, that, that had the effect of, of uh, on 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 the um, finance finance and not not utilising all the finance at the time, but it will be utilised. Uh, there's also some on the corporate. Uh, what's the actual wording? Sorry. Um, Page seventy four. I think the chair was referring to corporate applications update. And are there implications of that in terms of the, um, will it impact in our, our uh, adoption of IT that is making us more efficient? So is there an impact anywhere else in making that saving? No, Chairman, I think it's, again, it's a, a simple slippage in terms of work program rather than anything that's more uh, specific. Um, and again, over the course of the last year, we've prioritised our IT activity, which meant some activity has been slightly delayed and slightly slowed down. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's been it's been held back. So we're not going to hear in a meeting two times two meetings since that uh, this hasn't happened because of the IT resource hasn't caught up. <laughs> I can assure you that corporate IT are w working uh, extremely uh, uh, hard on making up. Uh, for the lost time, which was uh, due to due to the COVID-19 pandemic, what I would say is that this also gives the new administration the opportunity to look at corporate IT and um, get a balance for where we're going and what we're doing with it. I mean, uh, looking possibly at the um, telephony aspects, which uh, which although um, CMT have granted the funding, um, we will be looking to make sure that. Uh, uh, the, the well, not the correct platform, but the um, the platform proven to be uh, the chosen one for the Isle of Wight Council is the one that's um, uh, familiar, familiarised because there are two platforms at the moment. Although although the funding has been granted, we, there hasn't been a decision made on the platform, which. To you and I might seem a little bit strange, but um, uh, CMT have uh, moved in that direction. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not going to say too much about that. But it gives a, you and I, and indeed others around uh, others around here, uh, Councillor Quirk, the opportunity to to look into to, to look into to look into corporate IT and the telephony um, basis that we're going to move forward in in, in, in through the through the next uh, ten years or so. Gives us an opportunity to revisit it and possibly 
get a balance on it. But that's again, that's again why we're saying to you, as the alliance, as the alliance group and the administration, let's hear from you and let's and let's see what, which way we can take it. So there's an opportunity to the, to the revisit. The concern is it's all moving back. in the right direction and that we're we're not slowing something down that is important for us. Uh, Mr Metcalf, do you want to... just to give you a bit of confidence, the first column on that line says that the budget allocated for that project was £232,000. We estimate we'll spend £115,000 in the current year. But our, if you go to the what is effectively the fourth column, we're still saying that uh, at the end of the project, we still plan to spend £232,000. It just means that we'll spend some more in the next year rather than all of it in this financial year. It's just you have to remember to put that into next year's budget over and above anything else that you want to do for next year. I think we're already we're already coaching for that, but I think that what, what we've got what we've got to agree on is 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 a positive way forward and making sure that all of us around the around this table tonight are, are on board with okay, let's look and see and, and, and see if the, if there's if there's an opportunity to revisit something, let's revisit it. Let's have a look and be, before we go out and spend spend a few hundred thousand. Let's, let's see if we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction taking, and taking things responsibly. Because if we can save, save a bit, we might be able to utilise it elsewhere. And I know the, the chief exec's looking at me as I've gone out, but I haven't. I haven't. We're going to spend money responsibly. Glad to hear all of that. Uh, Councillor Quigley, Richard. Uh, thank you. Um, because these aren't written on the bus on the way in, there's a lot of thought goes into these reports, I'm quite sure. Um, and it is policy and scrutiny, so we're here to help as well as scrutinise. Is um, Rather than trying to catch you out, what there's got to be some of these areas you're really pleased with, that you've all worked very hard on, that you'd like to tell us about briefly. Um, and there's also been some things that probably you're concerned about that are currently a little scratch that could turn into a festering boil if we don't address them. Are any of those things in there that, that, that you want to highlight to us? N nothing in particular. It's just that you know, it, 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 local government finances are such that you, you know you're constantly changing the tune of the drum, playing the guitar, whatever you've got to do to make things work. And you know, we could sit here and go line by line, what's that for? I mean, you'll, you'll give a good answer, but it's policy and scrutiny. So are the things that are likely to you, you might not be very happy with at the minute that we can all help with, or the things you're happy with. I think we've got a lot of councillors who want to speak, but we're, if 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 we've still got time, I'd like to come in at the end. I mean, talking. Sorry, councillor. Thank you, thank you, chair. Um, thank you, councillor Quigley, because you're right. This is about uh, us, us all working together, isn't it? And obviously, the biggest uh, issue we've got um, facing us, um, apart from housing, obviously, will be uh, as a council setting our budget. So, obviously, really welcome any ideas that are from any from anybody. Um, regarding how we can make this budget work, um, work for the council, work for the people of this island. So, any ideas? Just keep them coming. Thank you, uh, Councillor Andre Devi. Thank you, Chair, and yes, thank you, Councillor Quigley. Um, I would just like to highlight that within my portfolio, I have over two hundred statutory requirements that call on funding. So, um, as I'm sure you will appreciate, there is very little wriggle room. In addition to that, there are also some statutory functions that we have to fund the surplus if we do not have that. Um, we, are, we are funded to a degree by government, but it's certain provisions that we have to actually do. So if, if that funding is insufficient, we have to fund it from the rest of the budget. So we do have a lot of budget pressures, but as colleagues have said, we do welcome um, your input because there are, there are some areas, and I'm sure certainly within my portfolio, I know that we are all singing off the same hymn sheet. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Bacon, Jonathan. Thank you. I, I think the question actually is trying to simply state the purpose of this report. It's there to highlight those things that against some sort of measuring system that uh, a bit above target, a bit below. I'm not entirely happy that uh, 
the uh, percentage recycled, reused is not quite up to target on page 62. Um, but the reason I wanted to speak is uh, you'll see identified in here that um, we're going to have some new indicators brought forward because one thing that's always been a bugbear of mine is that um, what you get in this report is often what we think we can put some sort of measure on rather than perhaps what is really telling the story of how the council is going. So we're never going to be able to measure everything in a statistical way that, that helps, but we're going to try and improve that. So you'll see that I think I've got three indicators at the moment. And the list is going to triple. Um, and I'm happy about that. I'm not sure it's, it's still going to give you everything you need to know, um, but hopefully it will give that better picture that you're asking for. Um, and I'd hope that this committee looks for those things that we maybe can't put a precise percentage on uh, and uh, be asking about those. Thanks. Well, I think everyone will actually endorse that, that you know, we, we need to be measuring our progress against where we're trying to get to. And uh, to do that, you have to sort of quantify some of the steps along the way. And that, that's, that's a good move, so support that. Uh, any other questions? Uh, come on. Can I just get a clarified then that if the LEPS £3.2 million was not included in this, the estimated spend of the floating bridge to date is £8.6 million? Chairman, the, the LEPS money is, inclu is, in is not included. Yeah. Sorry, it, it's not shown. It is included. So the gross spend is £5 million, so the net spend is two. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, any other questions? Uh, we note that. We're going to have it in those here. Uh, food programme and Christmas grants. I can't imagine anyone's going to object to this. Are there any questions? <coughs> Councillor Lilly. Uh, Lilly, Michael. Sorry, we're on the pop-up commercial opportunities one. No objections. No objections. To the, the holiday activity and food. I propose we support it. Then. Can we support this? Yeah, some second that. Yeah, sorry. That's agreed. Proposed by Michael, seconded by Karen. Uh, all in favour? Yeah, unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Pop up enterprises on council land. <laughs> uh, council of Elite, Michael. I just wanted to, um, I mean, support this because I think that we do need those kind of business opportunities um, within, you know, within, and we need to have easy opportunities and not get bureau bureaucratic because of licensing. And, and miss the you know the opportunity. Uh, we you know we we need things that, that pop up in our streets and for food festivals and a range of things. <clears throat> so I support the recommendation, but I would like to propose an ad, which is to work with town and parish councils because they are on the ground, and unless. Um, the regeneration team is closely working with them in the in the developments of that. You'll let the, end up really with um, duplication and not you know good use of resources. So I would just like to to propose or propose from this committee that we just uh, add the words or put the recommendation to the cabinet uh, that very much to work with town and parish councils uh, in, in development of this. Thank you. And uh, can I have a seconder for that? Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you um, for that, um, that endorsement, uh, Councillor Lilly, and for the, uh, the additional words. So if I point you to um, Paragraph 13 on page 91 of a very succinct report. I hope you'll uh, like that. Um, it does say 
there very clearly that um, sites offer for consideration discuss with any relevant town, parish or community councils to ascertain their views before any marketing. So it's an early stage discussion. However, if you're saying, would uh, the Isle of Wight Council be open to suggestions from the community, then yes, we would be. And yes, I've already had some um, people contact me when the, after the press release went out. So is that what you, so is, is that, is that a section, is that paragraph 13, does that cover what you want? Or are you looking for an extra, extra words to convey that it's a two way street? Would like those wording in in to to go to cabinet, right? As as put by the proposal that in your recommendation, which hopefully the cabinet support, it does include specifically the words. I know it is in in item thirteen, but I I would actually like it in the actual recommendation to actually clear that. Sometimes we need to 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 have that because these initiatives come up and sometimes often of that so I, I just want to and obviously the cabinet has to accept it or not but I'm recommending right as already seconded that in the wording of the recommendation you add to work with town and parish councils. Um, thank you Councillor Lilly. I, I wanted to just I'm happy to take that on board. It's not a problem because fundamental to this is working with town parish community councils because there are people that know how these sites are going to work. I might come up with an idea or the team yeah. might come up with They go, do you know what? That isn't going to work because on every Friday, something else, you just see what I'm saying. So it's this report is nothing without the town parish community council. So it's so ingrained in the DNA. That's why it's probably not in the recommendation because it's there. But more than happy to put that in there for you. Thank you. Yeah. Much of what I wanted to be said has been covered, and I thank Councillor Jones Evans for that response. I think I won't, aren't opposed to this at all. I think it was just the concern that there wasn't that, you know, we were just concerned that there may have not been that communication in place. And I think it's key that it is, and I'm, you know, I'm glad to have that clarity there because we've seen how it's worked successfully, you know, across the island of some places like East Cows, where actually the councils worked with us about, you know, land ownership and things like that as well. So I think, you know, that we did have concerns, but I'm glad that's been clarified now. And um, thank Councillor Lilly for putting that amendment forward there. I mean, yeah, I think if you've got any doubts, just read read paragraph 13 of the report and hopefully that is clear for everybody now where we're coming from. Thank you. Uh, just one point is that it's not just sites, but it's what you do on the site. And a uh, site that is sort of, uh, if you've got a couple of empty shops or something like that that the council actually owns and you put cafes in there and they take all the business away from the cafe that's already there, that actually damages the high street in the long term. So it's it's not just where the site is, but what it's used for that actually matters. I think what we're looking for, Councillor Quirk, from this is to add add value to sites where maybe there isn't anything at all, as well as offering offering a a, a business opportunity. But it's a, if it's adding, it's a putting amenity for for people that may be using these areas. So it's more adding value rather than. Um, taking something away from something that's already existing. We've got quite a lot of scope and, you know, we'd, we've taken, we've, we've been very lucky because we're working alongside Cornwall Council who have been doing this for the past eight years and have actually turned over, um, well, actually earned a million pounds uh, for their authority, obviously a bigger county than ours. But so we've been very lucky that we can work alongside them learning all the learning from the mistakes and the successes they've had over the past eight years so it's not it's not my idea i'm quite happy and quite you know i'm not proud about taking you know taking someone else's idea and asking them to help me help me do it so that's what we're doing but totally take on board what you're saying councillor stevens you still a comment whilst we're um taking on board the uh working alongside the town and parish councils wouldn't it be um I'm, I'm here to be shot down with this. Wouldn't it be uh, agreeable to actually put and other stakeholders? Because uh, you will then expand it not only to town and parish councils, but also to the local community itself, voluntary sector, or, and or uh, and or other um, uh, event holders, shall we say? And I'll leave it at that. I mean, I'm, it's only a suggestion because. Councillor Lilly's put his proposal forward, and I'm just thinking, well, you might want to expand it just a little bit further. 
I'm happy to put that in and put and other relevant stakeholders. Uh, Councillor Quigley, Richard. Uh, can, can, I, can I just say, I think we need to trust Julie. I think Julie's got quite a lot of experience in this area. And I think the fact um, she's copy, not copying, and take, take, take the wrong way, Julie, sorry. Um, you know, you, you were partnering with Cornwall. I've got, I, all I really want to say is I think we need to trust what you're doing and I support yeah. uh, what you're doing going forward. Thank you, Councillor Quigley. It is a pilot, so we're going to run it for one year. So we will we'll learn as we go along. But we like to get, get this off, off the ground and for next season. That's something that's what's really important. Thank you. And, and the danger is, and no, no offence, Michael, but the danger is it'll take a year to go around all the stakeholders and we'll have missed the season and the shops will have crumbled. And so, yeah, thank you. Let's stick to town and parish councils to start. I, I think uh, everyone is supportive of the uh, the opportunities this presents. Uh, we've got a, a motion. Uh, those in favour of the motion? Unanimous. Sorry. Uh, review the options to identify the investment proposals for regeneration of Culver Parade Tourism Opportunity Area. Um, I've had a request from uh, Councillor Ward, uh, to, uh, one of the uh, Sandown Councillors, to, to present to the meeting on this. Uh, Councillor Ward, yeah, have you got a microphone near you? I, I have, Chairman, thank you. I acquired one from another table. Um, we soldiers are... Uh, uh, ready when you are. Okay, thank you. Um, members, fellow members, I, I address you from the angle of the regeneration of Sandown. That's where I'm coming from. The Isle of Wight Council Cabinet's decision to abandon Dinosaur Isle, di the Dinosaur Isle proposal, steals Sandown's regeneration prospects. Quite clearly, the independents don't care about Sandown's derelict hotels, struggling high street and seafront. The dinosaur proposal would provide Sandown and the island with a national, if not international, attraction. It would be hugely invigorate Sandown, the wider Bay Area, and increase tourism for the whole island. The chairman of the Dinosaur Isle Museum Trust says the proposal would warrant world heritage status. We're going to throw that away. And potential investors who are interested in the opportunities the project will bring to Sandown have already approached him. Yet the independents give no cogent explanation why it has been abandoned. Why? The Alliance corporate plan, open and transparent. I'm very pleased that Councillor Stevens mentioned it in his answers, open and transparent. At least one of their members knows what they're after. OK, I repeat, open and transparent. The Alliance corporate plan, they promise that their administration will be open and transparent. Well, it seems they have failed at the first hurdle to abide by their promise. The corporate plan contains the statements below. The adoption of all policies and strategies will follow community consultation exercises. Secondly, the increase Increase the public and independent expert advice for key decisions. If this not is a key decision for the island, I don't know what is. So, none of what they promised has happened. Yet they are still di dismissing this multi-million pound investment. Why? The two relevant cabinet members who signed off the paper have not engaged with the Dinosaur Isle Museum Trust, nor has the ward councillor who ignored an invitation to a briefing yet she will be making the decision, helping to make the decision. Misleading statements. The cabinet paper states that the tender process has been terminated. Why? Dinosaurus has not withdrawn. The independents have just abandoned it. And the Isle of Wight Council has ignored requests for cooperation. Why? Our procurement offices deem the dinosaurus as bid as too good and beyond the scope of the original tender. So the other two bidders, original bidders, had to be given the chance to re-bid. Why has this not happened? 
and I refer you to a cabinet paper of March 21, in which the recommendation is to undertake a review and assessment of the invitation to tender to better understand the viability issues in order to ensure the procurement process can probably consider the full range of development and investment opportunities to meet the broad objectives of the Council. Officers will report back to the Cabinet with a detailed report of their findings and recommendations at the earliest opportunity, anticipated June 21. Unfortunately, that was the wrong side of the election. Okay, That was 10 months ago. It's now six months overdue and still no sign of anything. Consultation. The paper openly says there has been no real consultation, not even with the town council, not even with the business community, and certainly not with the residents who have so much to gain in terms of hundreds of jobs you could create. The uplift of the high street, and lastly, but most importantly, the reinvigoration of our derelict hotels, which dragged down Sandown's reputation and tourism. Why no consultation? I have asked several businesses and about their ideas of what this will do for the town. They are very supportive of the dinosaur idea because there has been no real proposal yet. Quite clearly, they can see the tremendous benefits it would bring to the town. Strangely, the independents cannot or will not acknowledge the benefits of this project, which thus demonstrates a dearth of ambition. Why? There has been no engagement by the independent alliance councillors with the Dinosaur Isle Museum Trust or Dinosauria. Why? The petition. The paper quotes a 3,000 signature petition as evidence of local support of Browns. The producer of the social media petition admits that these 3,000 signatories were not all Sandown residents at all. Some were from other parts of the island, the mainland, even abroad. I do ask, did the petition inform the signatories yeah, sure. of what the alternative was and its benefit to Sandown? Yeah. There's not a question. Chair, yeah, can I ask a point of order, please? Michael. <clears throat> I have never known in, in scrutiny's experience, and I've been on it for a long time, that actually a member who's not on the committee is given an opportunity to actually go into a full speech. I, I don't think it is in our constitution to allow this to actually happen. Um, and I really do actually question uh, that this has been allowed to actually speak. We have members that represent each you know, cross party, and it's for us to be actually um, asking questions, not in this in this way. Yes, under members' questions, you can raise members can r raise things, but I think this is totally out of order. In the, the order, con the constitution allows for members who are not members of this committee to address the committee. I've checked this in advance with uh, the deputy monitoring officer uh, in the absence of the monitoring officer at the time. Uh, so it's, it's allowed, but I do think you should uh, speed up and get to the I point. Will, I will. Um, Chairman, I'd just like to point out, I've asked several questions. How many times have I said why? Just the point, OK? Let me answer <laughs> Well, I will do. Let me answer the question first, OK? Um, right, the petition. I, I, I think I've got to the point where it, they, they weren't all Sandown residents. And um, in February 2021, the monitoring officer declared the petition was illegal, in aims of, as the aims of the petition could not be met. Yet the pretend independents quote the petition as evidence to bolster their case. Why? I won't talk about Browns because I'll cut short. Browns has lost money for decades and will continue to lose money. That's why the last leasey gave you that. Why well, hang on to it? Okay. So alternative suggested to bring the alternative suggested bring no benefit to Sandown. There is mention of biosphere, but council officers have told me the biosphere designation will bring no benefit to Sandown's regeneration. The alternative 
to move the museum away from Sandown is just another blow to Sandown, taking the attraction away. Another question, why? I strongly urge the corporate scrutiny... I, I to totally be, object, Chair, yeah, on point of the... Let me finish. I'm on my, a I'm my last sentence. Let me finish. And actually, I strongly urge the Corporate Scrutiny Committee to recommend that the Cabinet paper is withdrawn until all the questions above are answered. Furthermore, I request the Policy and Neighbourhood Scrutiny Committee to be asked to examine the true facts of the Dinosaur Isle Museum Trust members and dinosaurs as poss if possible and report back to the Council. I believe this is warranted as it is a huge multi-million pound investment with tremendous beneficial impact to the island as a whole. Okay, but remember, open and transparent. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ward. Uh, open up to members, questions, comments. Chair, it might help uh, uh, to make a uh, comment at this stage. Do you want to some of the questions? Uh, I would have liked to have notice of the questions because there were a whole raft of them there. Um, and Council Ward uh, has not approached me with any of them in advance, but I would say one thing that I think rather uh, was the basis of many of his questions and his assertion that the uh, dinosauria investment has been abandoned. That is simply not the case, as the paper refers to. doesn't say that. Pay paragraph 3 and paragraph uh, option A, paragraph 19, makes it clear that this is opening up the possibility for that investment to continue. Not Elsewhere. necessarily, not necessarily in Sandown. Elsewhere. It, I'm talking about Sandown. Uh, Ian. Thank you. After, please. Right. Uh, Councillor Bacon, please go on. Thank you. Um, I'm sure there are questions. I just wanted to make that point clear that this is about opening up an opportunity that had become stagnated and Dinosauria, uh, we understand, was on the point of walking away because of that, because the previous tender process has failed. Um, so it really seems to be short and blunt about it that what was trying to happen in Sandown was to fit the square peg in a round hole. Uh, what Dinosauria wanted could not be provided for uh, without serious damage to other uh, heritage assets in the area and placing a large part of Culver uh, behind a paywall. Um, so what has done, been done here is to free us from that previous process, uh, restart the dialogue um, for an investment of this sort, and... Councillor Ward, if he had asked me, he'd know that I have spoken to the Dinosaur Isle Trust uh, and having very good conversation with them. So, um, again, it, it would be nice to have the list of questions I could go through and deal with them all. So, uh, there are so many answers that could be given that would help this. But that conversation is carrying on. Um, we have the potential to look for other uh, locations for a large attraction that simply doesn't fit in Sandown. We have the option now to continue with a dinosaur-based element of that at Sandown. Uh, we have the option, the ability to continue with looking at a much more uh, appropriate uh, option for the, the land at Sandown that protects existing heritage assets. Um, and in all this, my responsibility is, is heritage we have a world-class paleontology collection and academic potential that has been sitting dormant and unable to be uh, used, displayed, um, and, and have the most made of it for years now. So again, what we're doing here is freeing things up so those options and uh, possibilities can now be realized. As I say, talking to the trust, um, and talking to other potential partners. So, so I I'm, I'm, I'm don't want to go off on a speech now because we've had a very long speech, but the very simple point is there is no abandonment of the investment uh, partner, Dinosauria, and there is no suggestion of abandonment of Sandown, quite the opposite. 
So, so thank you, Chair. And uh, obviously, this is a, a double, double, um, like a tag team, this paper, um, the Councillor Bacon and, and myself from the two different directorates there. And, you know, I just wanted to reassure um, members and particularly Council Wards that we're actually committed to Sandown. And that's why going down and walking around the site, you can see what was on the table was just never, ever, ever going to work taking more land than was offered in the, in the initial procurement when we had to go out to procurement again so we took a long hard look at that and just said this is not going to work it's going to be a waste of everybody's time we need to look at how we can find what's appropriate for that location in the in the, the, the in the sense of tourism and as, as council bacon said found find the appropriate home for the collection a very very important collection which is the islands collection and then we do have our dinosaur finds across the island. It's really, really important. So it's not abandonment at all. We're not abandoning Sandown. We're looking at it with fresh eyes and through the lens of ecotourism, which is where this administration is going. This is where the island's future is. I think we've got, for the past year and a half, we can see how people are coming to the island because of its natural beauty. Sandown has, you know, won Beach of, Beach of the Year Award, you know, just the year before last. National Award, this, you know, just last week. It's really, it's really very important that we look at the regeneration of Sandown as a whole and, and other areas of the island as well. But it's, it's though we talk about homes, the right homes and the right places, it's regeneration in the right places as well and what, what fits with the local local people. I've, since this paper came up, I've had messages people saying, thank you so much, you've saved Browns, it's so important to us. Re so so, no, they, no, you, you, you made, I'm sorry, Council, Council Ward, they said it's so important to us, that's what they said. That's what, this is what residents are telling me. OK, do you know what? I find this really quite irritating because we're, 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 we're spending our evening. We want to answer questions. We're doing our best and all we get being, being heckled. I know you're upset about this, Council. I can tell that. But this is not the way to, to go and die. You've not written to me once since the paper came out. I could have answered plenty of questions, as could Councillor Bacon. I want to do it in public so people see you. I think I'll, I think I'll I think I'll just stop speaking now, Councillor Quirk. There is uh, quite clearly uh, 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 differences of uh, opinion that it's uh, what people in the bay, uh, maybe not the sand down, uh, say, and it maybe it depends who you are directed to and see. I am very aware that there is tremendous concern expressed by the lady from the Hotelist Association because. Uh, the bay does need regeneration, and uh, and this came somewhat out of the blue. That most of us read about it in the, the, the newspaper. It didn't go into uh, policy and scrutiny committee. It hasn't, you know, which is maybe a route that will be a very good way of uh, progressing something of this nature. But it's, uh, um, I, I think, it came out as a shock to many people and the way that the paper reads is very much that we're looking to put it somewhere else and uh, not very very light on what you might replace anything there with. Uh, Councillor Bacon, Jonathan. Well, I th we're trying to make it clear what we're aiming to do um, so I suppose a minor apology if the paper is not made it clear enough. Uh, I hope we are making it clear enough now. Um, this is about dealing with a world-class collection that the island has and a world-class location that the island has, both of which have been stagnated over the last few years and to release up the opportunity to do uh, the best we can with both. Um, in the last week, I've had discussions with uh, two potential funding opportunities that now can come forward uh, in relation to these things, the Biosphere and the Bay Project and the Arts Council who are looking at the island and are looking at um, collections such as that, a dinosaur isle uh, as a potential source of in, uh, thing to invest in. Um, we're currently looking at available sites, whether they be council or private ownership, 
um, that might accommodate the Dinosauria project, as I say, actively working in that regard. Uh, and I feel I owe it to friends of mine to say one thing. I know the previous owner of Browns. I know perfectly well what their position was and why they left. And Councillor Ward should perhaps apologise to them at some point. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Quigley, Richard, and then Councillor yeah, Thank you. If somebody just tuned in for another planet, then you all say dinosaur that often. They think we're referring to ourselves in the third party, perhaps. But um, on a serious note, I, I think it, our local council is run by cabinet, and we have to trust the cabinet as we did in the previous administration. We have to trust the cabinet with, with decisions. And I can see you're really passionate about it. You know, I won't say angry, because I think, I, I think that does you disservice. I think you're very passionate. Unfortunately, if we're just going to do a to and, fro, to and fro about what's happened in previous administrations and this one, we're going to get nowhere. I have no affinity to any political party other than the Labour Party in here, so I'm on my own. Uh, but I have got an affinity to the people of the island and the best for the island, so I, I'm going to have to put my trust in the Cabinet. And if we're not happy, this can come back to policy and scrutiny every meeting, and it can be scrutinised every time. I'm sure nobody over that side of the room will have a problem with that. But I don't think we're going to get anywhere unless we do. Is that fair enough, Ian? And I don't think any other one there'd ever mind. I don't know they'd mind that because I think they've got faith in what they're doing. Oh, exactly. We keep the meeting as the meeting. Right, Councillor Lilly, Michael. Before I make a report about this, I mean, I, I, I do think that, you know, um, the way that this has actually been put forward, uh, I've been on this council for some years and I've been on scrutiny. And I would, uh, if I had particular issues, I would be told, right, advised by, um, by Paul Thistlewood to actually put the questions to the cabinet member first, right? And then, if, if those questions were not being asked, then come to scrutiny. I think if we've opened up and created a pre precedent where actually all the all the members of the the council can actually just come and actually put their things direct, so it can go straight into the press. Well, I, I think it makes an absolute farce. So I want that actually minuted. That I'm absolutely disgusted the way that it's handled. Even though I respect uh, Councillor Ward being passionate about what he believes, but I do not think this is the way to handle it. Uh, within that, and I definitely, um, in my experience on scrutiny, have never uh, experienced that in, the, in that way. In the point about the report, I take what Councillor Quigley says is uh, we have to trust to the fact that actually it did need to be re looked at. And I, I myself have also spoken to the trust and have got the uh, details. And the main thing that I think is concerned is we don't throw the baby out of the bathwater, which I think is the intention, and we get actual the investment on, the, on this island. <clears throat> there are three things, if you go to any museum, children's museum in the world, right? Uh, you know, including Winchester Science Centre, which I know was was interested in, in, in this. There are three things that are in those children's museums. And one is rockets, right, which we have at Sandown Airport and site. The other is dinosaurs. And the third now, which is big, climate change. So we've got right, the, the Isle of Wight biosphere. We have got the history of rockets because this was Rocket Island. This is where our rocket, Prospero is still up there uh, uh, from that. We've got a replica of the Black Arrow that was built by local engineers who built the original one. And we've got the biggest world's collection, world collection on dinosaurs, right? So we have got a massive opportunity for tourism and to be the place. That's why Winchester Science Centre was interested, and that's why the company, the dinosaur, is interested. All I want reassurance, right, and I think this report, I get it, is 
that we, in the next 12 months, do not lose the opportunity of that in, uh, investment into this island because we have three gold nuggets that could absolutely change the economy of this island. Let's not use it. And I think I would like to propose that we recommend this report, right? Uh, with that, and I look for a second, seconder. And I think we should go to the vote. Thank you. Uh, I still have uh, Councillor Andre. I will allow to. Uh... Thank you. Just very briefly, um, I am the ward member that this whole area falls within. We are a listening administration. We have just listened to council award. I also listen to my residents and that's why I am supporting this paper because that's what my residents are telling me. Thank you. Um, Can we go to the vote please? Uh, Mike Besson has also indicated, I will let him speak and then I will uh, take it to the vote. Thank you. I'll be succinct, as I normally am, and I'll be sincere. I think what we experience this evening, and especially where Councillor Ward is coming from, is frustration. What we haven't had and what we've experienced since May is more or less radio blackout over the whole project. What we haven't had, what we haven't we've been hit with a, a raft of information this evening, which is absolutely great. And I do understand there's got to be a degree of commercial sensitivity around this, absolutely. But what we haven't seen coming is communication. If this had been communicated out in some way, in some way, then none of us would have been in the dark here this evening. It's great you've got plans. I'd like to ask a question on who did you consult? Was the residents consulted? Was the stakeholders consulted? Are you referring back to the original consultation back in 1718? Um, so I think really what we need to see is more communication from cabinet coming forward. If you communicated what you just said there before, we would probably be on board with your plans, but we're not. We didn't know anything about that. So that's just an observation. So I'll just put that in. I would like to make an amendment to the old resolution about supporting it, and that is that it's supported and passed to the. Uh, policy and scrutiny committee for neighbourhoods and regeneration for their input. Will someone second my amendment? I'm happy to accept that. Yeah, are you happy to accept it? Right. Uh, uh, is it urgent and succinct or? Um. I was going to ask to make a comment after you, you, you had your vote, but um, we've put this paper out and this process we're going through today is the communication and the debate on it. Um, as I say, it would have, it's been out for some days now. It would have been useful if the list of questions had come forward and we could have had a polite and reasoned conversation about this um, prior to uh, things going as they have this evening. Uh, I am more than happy, I, I can't speak for Julia, I don't know her diary, I'm more than happy to meet with those members who might want to. Um, I, the earliest I can do it is Thursday afternoon uh, and listen to the questions and perhaps have, a, as I say, a decent conversation over a cup of coffee to maybe allay some concerns which I think are, have arisen but are, I'm afraid to say, very much misplaced. Um, and I have been would have been happy to do that the moment this paper was published. So um, that offer is there. I'm say I, I apologise. I can't do it before that. But um, so getting this out there for discussion is what you do when you publish a cabinet report and a scrutiny committee paper report. Uh, Councillor P. C. Wilcox. Well, I'd just like to say um, 
uh, we are open and transparent in as much as is any councillor, as I used to. I didn't raise things in the public arena. I went to the cabinet member to find out what on earth was going on, all the officer responsible. Um, so, and that is, that is open to all of you. If you've got questions, just knock on the door and contact. What I would say is the staff have lived with uncertainty for over four years not knowing where their jobs were, whether they were going to keep their jobs, where they weren't or anything else, where the consultation was going. They have, they've had no uncertainty. They've lived in absolute misery for four years because of the uncertainty. I have assured them that for three years they will be in that building so that they can then move on with their lives. They can come up with creative ways of using dinosaur, the, the dinosaur facility that there's now to make extra money and to be innovative. I wanted assurance for that staff. They've worked their absolute guts out during COVID. I tell you, they really have in order to keep that building open as much as they could. And they don't deserve to have um, uncertainty placed on them again. They've got three years in that building. Even if we were to inherit multi-billions of pounds and have the ideal location, it would take years to build. Though I want assurances that those staff aren't going to be messed around anymore. Council, quite sorry, and um, Council, Council Bacon offered offered for uh, a meeting on Thursday afternoon. I'll do my best to make myself available for it. But I just wanted just to <laughs> put, this, put, put this over that, you know, please don't labour under the misapprehension that this is a lost opportunity for Sandown. It's not at all. Dinosaur, the, the people from, um, from Germany had not even been to a site visit. When you look at what they did in Portugal, it's in a forest. It's not on a floodplain on a beach. It's very, very different. And we looked at this with a fine tooth comb because I didn't feel it was right, but I went, went as far as I could without going to Portugal, which other members of the Conservative group did last year. It, it just didn't, it wasn't right. It wasn't right. So please don't think we, there's been a side seal deliver or we've drawn it up. This, Not this at all, a, nowhere near that. Uh, can we go this to the vote? This should be being held at Policy and Scrutiny Committee for regeneration, neighbourhoods and regeneration. Chair, yeah, can we Not go to the vote? Put it to the vote. So those who are in favour of the vote to support this, but with it going to Horace. Um, because um, I'm talking about the work plan now. So you want it looked at, but it's going to Cabinet, and we certainly wouldn't be able to look at it to at least January or even after that, because I think the work plan's quite uh, set not, now. Not for the decision. This cabinet can make the decision. This, Just this telling person, you when it, but, when it can be looked at. That's going to be the first of a whole series of decisions. And the whole thing should be actually considered and the opportunities, because they're not going to say where we're going to end up. They're going to say, what's the direction of travel? And uh, this, the direction of travel is a very positive one. That should be going through the Policy and Scrutiny Committee for Neighbourhoods and Regeneration. I'm not saying it shouldn't be, but I'm just saying we, we only sit four times a year, so... I'm going your next week's work plan. No, no or, or maybe even January. Well, that's something to work out with the relevant members, and uh, I'm happy to have a conversation with, with both the Cabinet members who are involved. Can we go to the vote now, please? Yeah. Right. But it's going to the vote, so putting it to the vote, those in favour, please raise your hand. As amended. As amended, yeah. As amended, yes. That's unanimous. No. Is it? Yes. Oh, those, oh, okay. Uh, we move on. Thank you. Uh, that concludes the cabinet items, Chair. Yeah. Uh, forward plan. If members refer to the forward plan on the cabinet papers, because that's that's the latest update, Chairman. And of course, what we've seen is that if members have any particular issues about any item on the forward plan, please contact the relevant cabinet member. Any questions on the forward plan? <coughs> Are we happy to note the forward plan? Noted. Yeah, everyone in favour? 
Thank you. Uh, work plan. Any amendments to the... And just a reminder, Chairman, we have a special meeting in December as well, so the, the agenda, the, the, the items are actually shown in the work plan for the December meeting. So we note that as well. Uh, those in favour of noting? Noted. Thank you. Uh, members' question time. I don't think we've got any written no. No. <laughs> uh, no, no written questions. Have we got any? Uh, anyone wants to raise anything? No. <laughs> okay. Um, and th I like thank all members that we've actually managed to uh, even get through this with contentious issues and actually come to consensus. And, uh, well done. Thank you very much. I'll end the meeting.